Hi, this is Jeff, your ProtoPy expert, once again answering your ProtoPy questions. Today I'm answering two questions. They're similar and they have similar solutions. The first question comes from Greg. He asks, I've watched several tutorials, but I can't figure out how to simply pause and play audio by pressing the same button. And Elisa asks, how do I pause video when it is tapped? In both of these cases, the key is to use something called a variable to keep track of whether or not the video is playing and have Protopie make a decision based on that. I'm going to show you a video solution for Greg's question, even though he asked about audio. The solution is the same for audio and video, and since video is more visual, let's use video. In my Pi, I have a video that covers my entire screen, and I have this play button. If I preview this, nothing happens, my video doesn't play, and when I click the play button, the video doesn't start. So let's begin by hooking up our play button. I'm gonna click the play button on the canvas and then add a tap trigger to it. Then I'm going to use a playback response and I want it to play my video. Now when I preview this, my video should start when I hit play. Now it doesn't pause though when I click it again. Let's make that work. In the bottom left of your corner, you're gonna see something called variables. This is your variables panel. If you click it, it'll expand up. And you can make a new variable by pressing the plus button. Now, don't be scared of this. The word variable sounds scary, but it really is just a fancy way of saying a way to store a little bit of information. And in our case, whether or not the video is playing. If you click the plus button, you can make a new variable. And you're gonna see when you do that, you have two options, for all scenes or for this scene. Now, if you had multiple scenes in your project and you wanted this information to persist from one scene to the next, you would use this first option. If you only have one scene or you don't need that information to be used in another scene, then you can use the second option. In our case, it doesn't matter. We only have one scene in our project, so I'm going to choose the second option. Now my variable has been made. It's named variable one. We're going to name it something a bit more appropriate. You can rename it by double clicking it and you want to give it a name that indicates what it's being used for. In our case, we want to keep track of whether or not the video is playing, so I'm going to call it is video playing. Now you're going to see I've done something a little bit funny here. You can't use spaces in a variable name. So if you wanted to differentiate different words in your variable name, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. I've used something here called camel case, which is where you capitalize the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth word, etc. Um, some another way you might see this is maybe it's all uppercase with underscores is video playing right or you don't even have to do anything special you could have it all lowercase is video playing all of these are fine they'll all work I like camel case so I'm going to capitalize the letter V and the letter P the next thing you need to do is you need to give it a type now this is the type of information that it will be storing you can have it store numbers, you can have it store text, and that's like letters, phrases, words, etc. Or you can have it store a color. I'm going to keep things simple. I'm going to have it store a number. In this second box is the variable's initial value. This is the value that the variable will have when your prototype starts. In our case, the video was paused when it's starting, and I want zero to represent paused video. So I'm going to use zero to represent paused. Later, I'm going to update this with the number one to represent playing video. And you're going to see how I do that. But I want it to be zero when I start. Now, the other thing I need to do is when I play the video, I need to update the value accordingly. So once I start playing the video, I need this to update to be one. And I can do that with the assign response. And the assign response, as you might imagine, assigns a new value to your variable. So you need to select the variable, is video playing. And now that the video is playing as a result of this tap trigger, I'm gonna update this to be one. Now, if I preview this, it looks much the same as we had before. I'm gonna press the play button, the video starts playing. And I can't even tell if my variable is even being updated. So here's a trick that you can use. If you hover over the variable you made, you're gonna see there's this little ladybug icon. If you click that, you'll get this green box. And the green box uh, will give you the value of that variable at all times, even as it updates. And you can move that around on your screen. Sometimes it gets confused with other things that are in there. But you can move it around to put it in a place that's a bit more visible where you want to be. Let's move our video back where we were. And now when I preview this and I hit the play button, you're going to see that updated to be one. If you missed it, I'm going to reset it. Is video playing is currently equal to zero. 
And when I hit the play button, it was updated to be one. Now I want to make a decision based on the value of that. Zero represents paused video, one represents playing video. I want to make a decision based on the value of is video playing. If it's equal to zero, I want to play the video. And if it's equal to one, I want to pause the video. We can use something called a condition. And if you click the plus underneath your trigger, it's the very bottom. You can choose condition and we need to set up the condition to check for the value of is video playing. In this first box, you can choose is video playing from the list. And I want to check if it's equal to the value zero. There are other comparisons you can make. It's a little bit beyond the scope of what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, we're just going to be using the, the equals comparator here. Is video playing equals zero or is the video paused? And if so, then I want it to play. Now, something you should know, right now I've got the playback response and the assign above my condition. These will always happen whenever you hit the tap trigger, whenever you click this button. Anything that's above all of your conditions will always happen. I want these to happen only when this condition is met. So I'm going to take these two, I'm going to hold down shift, click them both, and drag them into the condition. Now I have a condition for when video is paused or is playing equals zero. I'm going to add a second condition for when video is playing. Condition. And when my variable is video playing equals one. And in this case, I want the video to pause. So I'm going to use the playback response on the video layer, but I'm going to choose the second option, pause. And I also want to update the value of is video playing back to zero now that the video was paused. So I'm going to once again use the assign response, choose the is video playing variable, and set it to zero. Now when I preview this, if I click the play button once, the video starts playing. And if I click it again, the video pauses. And I can do this over and over again. Click, playing, click, pause. Now this is great and it's working and it solves Greg's question, but I'm gonna make this a bit smarter. In my play pause toggle button, you're gonna see I have a couple of icons. The play icon you can see. There's also a pause icon where the opacity is set to zero. I can reuse my variable here to now change the state of this button. I want the play, the play icon to show when the video is paused, and I want the pause icon to show when the video was playing. Now you might have already guessed I can just add some opacity responses to both of these conditions, and that will work just fine. But I'm gonna show you a bit more clever way to do it. We're gonna use something called the detect trigger. Add trigger, detect, right here in the middle. Detect fires when something changes, and that something is whatever it is you want to watch. In our case, I want to look for whenever the value of my variable is video playing whenever it changes. So I'm going to pick my variable is video playing, and any time the value changes, this is going to fire. So in both of these cases where we use the assign here and the assign here, we're changing the value of is video playing, and that will cause this to fire over here. Let's once again use our condition. And I'm going to say with when is video playing equals one or when the video was playing. I'm going to use these opacity responses to change the visibility of my icons here. So the play icon, I want to be set to zero. And I don't want to see this animated. I want this to be immediate. So I'm going to turn my duration down to zero. And I'm going to add another opacity. This one instead will be for the pause icon. And I'm going to set that to 100. And accordingly, I want this to happen immediately. Duration is zero. Now I need another condition for when video is paused. And I could add the condition and add opacity responses in here, but I'm going to save myself a little bit of time. I'm going to duplicate this condition. And I can do that by clicking on it and then pressing Command D or Control D in Windows. And I'm just going to modify this condition now because it's almost the same. We just need to make a few tweaks to it. So in this case, I want to change the icon for when the video was paused. And that's when is video is playing equals zero. I'm going to change the opacity for my play button to be 100 and for my pause icon to be zero. Now, when I preview this, you're going to see I click once. My video plays and I see the pause icon. 
I click again, my video pauses, and I see the play icon. And I can do this over and over again. And now that everything's working, I don't need to see this green box anymore. And you can turn off that display the same way you turned it on. So if I go back to my variable and I click the ladybug icon here, it disappears. And now when I play it, that box is gone. So this answers Greg's question, but it didn't answer Elisa's question, at least not directly, at least not yet. In her case, she wanted to know how to pause the video by just tapping the video itself. And it's almost the same thing. And in fact, it's gonna be a really simple change. I'm gonna turn off my play pause button. We don't need that anymore. We're gonna have the video instead be the trigger for this. And if I click on the tap trigger over here, I'm gonna change the object that it acts on. Instead of being the play pause toggle button, I'm gonna choose the video. Now, when I preview this and I click the video, video starts. And if I click it again, video pauses. Play, pause. There you go, easy as pie. If you've run into a snag with one of your pies and you'd like to ask us for help, check out the link in the description below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.